Hello and welcome, my name is Matt Ashby and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to replicate the analogue film look using Adobe Lightroom. Taking your photos from this to this. These settings will vary slightly from picture to picture so what I advise you do is you go through the entire tutorial, save the settings as a preset and then go back through your pictures and make the slight adjustments you want to to each individual picture as you see fit. Okay, so you're going to want to open up Lightroom. Uh, this is on desktop, but I'm sure it's very similar, if not the same, on mobile as well. So I've got eight different pictures down here, which all kind of vary in sort of photography and lighting conditions as well. So it's just going to show how the preset works differently for different pictures and how you can adjust them accordingly. Uh, so what we're going to do is just head on to the first picture down here and go straight across to the side panel and start with the exposure. So exposure you're going to bring down to minus 0.1. As well as the contrast, we're going to bring that down to minus 20. The highlights are going to be brought up to 18. Minus 30 for the shadows. Plus 45 for the whites. And minus 24 for the blacks. And then on the presence, we've got minus 20 for the texture. Minus 20. The clarity is going to be also minus 25 and dehaze is going to be plus 40. All right, so we're going to also bring the vibrance to plus 31 and we're not going to touch the saturation. So next we're going to go down to the tone curve. Here I've selected the green channel, uh, but it will start on RGB, so that's what it will look like. But make sure you switch it to the green channel. And we're going to bring this white light up just ever so slightly. So clicking on the bottom dot here, we're going to bring up about a millimeter or so as well as the top as well so hopefully this is going to make an almost parallel white line that runs alongside these dots so maybe slightly higher as well and that's going to give a bit of a green tinge to the uh, the tone of the uh, picture so as you can see the before is that and the after and what that's done is slightly reduce the uh, the sharpness of the image as well as adding a bit of green tinge and we'll go down now to add the grain so we're going to skip past all of this stuff and just head straight to the bottom so scrolling all the way down to grain now, right at the very bottom, we've got it down here. I'm going to bring the amount up to around 50. All right. uh, this is probably going to make the biggest difference between it looking like a digital picture to a film picture. Let's bring, it, bring out the size as well to so about 55. And the roughness we're going to bring to about 40. As you can see when zooming in, that's the before and the after. It does look like the quality is a bit reduced, but you've got to remember that we are, that's very far zoomed in and posting this anywhere online, unless you're going to be blowing this up to a really big canvas, then this is going to look absolutely fine in terms of quality. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is head up to develop a new preset and you can save all of those settings as whatever you want to call it, but you'd want to call it something like film look or or something similar, something memorable. You just hit the create button and then that's gonna save it to your side panel over here. Um, we have got mine saved over here for 35 mil film preset and that allows you to use it later in the future without having to use all of those individual settings each time. So what we're gonna do now is click on that one, highlight the lot holding shift and then clicking on the, the final picture, highlighting all the pictures and we're gonna sync them. And that's gonna apply all of those effects we've done on the first picture to all eight of them. As you can see, it's gonna change them a little bit there. There we go. This one is a good example of how, because this is predominantly grass in the, you've got the original picture there, and it's a very grassy kind of picture, lots of green tones already. Having the green kind of, is maybe a little bit too much. We're gonna bring that down once again for this picture, um, but not too much. And same again for this one. Bring out that, and we're probably going to play around with the contrast as well on that one. Uh, so, as you can see, obviously, make the adjustments that you see necessary to each individual picture. Uh, obviously, all pictures are different, so it's not going to work perfectly for everything. But um, yeah, there's definitely a big difference between the before and the after. Uh, now, if you really want to add the icing onto the cake, then what we'll do is load this picture up into Photoshop. So, you're going to just want to export this and load it up into Photoshop. So, we've got the picture in Photoshop, and what we're going to do now is add a bit of film grain and film burns. If you want to tie something like overlay film effect um, onto Google Images, and that's going to bring up a whole bunch of these different kind of um, black screens with slight markings on. And we're going to pick this one here, this is probably my favourite. Um, we're going to save that image as well as um, overlay film burn. And we're going to pick one of these as well. This is also my favourite here. It's got a nice side contrast for the orange and the black. Um, and you're going to save those two images. So bringing them into Photoshop now, you've got the two here. And we're going to just drop and drag. So 
double click on that one, double click on that one. We'll work with the film grain first. So you're gonna scale that picture up and it won't look very good quality, but just wait for it to, uh, just wait for it to load after you've double clicked and then boom. And then you're gonna come down here to the, um, to the transparency settings and you're gonna change it from normal. You can pick kind of any of these that you see fit, but I think that works best is lighting or screen, depending on how harsh you want the, the contrast to be. So I'm gonna select screen for that. And then what you can do is really just position these white scuff marks or like dirt marks, I guess you'd call them, that would be more commonly found on film pictures. Um, and you can bring these kind of anywhere in the picture. Um, I would adv advise that you avoid putting them covering um, you know the main subject you don't wouldn't want a white mark directly around um, you know one of the main subjects but I'd say use it to fill in some of the dead space over there and then also bring the opacity down as well because you don't want it to distract away from the picture but you just want it to add a little bit of extra effect uh, as well as that with the film burn we've got over here you're going to want to do something very similar you're just going to bring it around up the scale like so something like that and then down here to the opacity settings and you can just put that on to I think lighten all screens probably we'll go for screen because that shows a bit more behind it as well um, so you've got screen you can bring the opacity down maybe to about about 80 percent or so and then what you could do is you can kind of position this I like to position it off the edge of the uh, the picture slightly to look like it's coming from the corner. Uh, and the good thing about this is that you can scale it up to basically any size and it's not really gonna go blurry. Or, well, it, it's, it's blurry already, so it doesn't it doesn't make a difference in terms of quality. Um, and then just position it in a corner of your choosing. So I'm gonna just put that down there like that. Uh, like I said, I wouldn't overdo this by any means because using this on a whole batch of pictures can really make it look quite cheesy, especially if you have the film burn in the same spot on every picture. It can obviously look like you've added it over the top because film burns are quite naturally, um, you know, it's like an accident in camera and it shouldn't be consistent on all pictures if, if it's there at all. And that's it. So thank you so much for following along with the tutorial. Uh, if it helped in any way possible and you found it interesting, please feel free to drop it a thumbs up and follow me on Instagram at mattashby.video. Um, and any questions or comments or concerns, please feel free to leave them down below in the comment section or message me on Instagram. Thank you so much and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Uh...